Bal Gangadhar Tilak was one of the first persons to be tried for sedition during the British Raj. Tilak was a prominent leader from the independence movement. He was represented in court by none other than a young Muhammad Ali Jinnah, the man who would go on to become the founding father of Pakistan. Section 124A or the Sedition Law as it is commonly known is a colonial era provision introduced to criminalize dissent by the British Raj. 75 years after independence, the law continues to be used and abused in Pakistan. Well, as far as Pakistan's sedition law is concerned, Section 124A of the Indian Penal Court was the precursor of Pakistan's Penal Court. Now, in 1870, the then colonial government introduced Section 124A in the Indian Penal Court to control the subjects of the colony. Now, if you read the if you read Section 124A of our Penal Court, it states that sedition includes exciting passions against the provincial or federal government or bringing the provincial or federal government into contempt or hatred. So the overbroad language of the Penal Code and of Section 124A in particular suggests that this law was designed to suppress dissent and muzzle all critique or legitimate critique of the then colonial government. And throughout history, we have seen that a number of popular and prominent figures throughout the Indian subcontinent have been subjected to the rigors of Section 124A of the Pakistan and Indian Penal Code. So, for instance, historically, we saw that Gandhi was indicted for sedition. We saw that Tilak was indicted for sedition. In fact, Qaeda Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah was Tilak's lawyer in his trial when he was charged for sedition. So, ideally, after India and Pakistan both gained independence and became democratic dispensations, while Section 124A of the Penal Code should have been repealed from the statute books, the law was continued because the law also gave an opportunity to repressive regimes in both the countries to suppress dissent. So, for instance, in India, although we have seen throughout India's history as well that the law of sedition has been applied against uh, dissidents, but in recent times, for example, we've seen that the current dispensation in India has used the law of sedition against those Muslim activists who talk about growing intolerance in India and who talk about India's shift from a secular polity to a uh, Hinduta uh, polity. Similarly, in Pakistan's case as well, we have seen the law of sedition being applied against uh, leftist and progressive voices. We have seen that the law of sedition has been applied against political dissidents. So, I think to, to, to kind of stir, if, if, you, if you were to encapsulate the history of the law of sedition, it may be said that the law of sedition is an is a tool available to every regime in Pakistan and India, whether dictatorial or democratic to use this law to muzzle all dissent. We also saw that last year when Justice Magbul Bakr of the Supreme Court retired, in his retirement reference also, he stated that laws such as the law of sedition are a remnant of our colonial past and these laws have no place in any modern and democratic polity. So as a result, these laws, as long as these laws exist on our statute books, these laws will be used to arm twist and these laws will be used as a tool of coercion and political engineering. Famous poets Fez Ahmed Fez and Habib Jalib have been tried under this law on charges of treason and conspiracy. A.K. Fazl al Haq, who presented the Pakistan Resolution on 23rd March 1940 as Prime Minister of the United Bengal, also faced sedition charges. In recent times, journalists Hamid Mir, Asad Tour, Bilal Farooqi, and Absar Alam have also faced the sedition charges. Former Prime Ministers Nawaz Sharif and Benazir Bhutto have also faced sedition charges. One of the newest ones to be added to the list is PTI leader Fawad Chaudhary, whose arrest has been condemned by human rights activists, journalists, and even members of the ruling coalition. Critics term it a draconian law.